Hi everyone, welcome to JC Parkland lecture video and today the topic is the alveolar ridge preservation to prevent the sinus lift. Well, I'm pretty sure that all, all of you watching this video are fully aware of the concept of ridge preservation, which uh, preserves the uh, horizontal and vertical dimension after extraction by grafting inside the extraction socket. If you, uh, if you graft a little bit more, then it can be a rich augmentation. And over the decades, a number of, a great number of studies have been published, including um, histological studies and radiographic studies, clinical studies, uh, systematic reviews, and even the long-term results are published and the uh, concept of rich preservation is well established. In 2011, the osteology consensus group has proposed the indications for the alveolar ridge preservation. And today, I want to focus the last but not the least indication of reducing the need for elevation of the sinus floor. Um, if you uh, read this article from uh, 2004, it's a cadaver study on Korean population and you will know that there are variations of the relationships between the root, uh, the root apex of the maxillary molars and the sinus floors. The authors propose that there are five types on the relationships, and the type one is sinus floor level is higher than the root apex. And from type two, type five, the sinus floor is lower than the root apexes. So, if it is the type 1 case, if you place the implant after extraction, there will be um, not a high chance that you have to consider sinus lift surgery. But if it's type 2 or type 5, after extraction, there is a good chance that you will have to do additional sinus lift surgery to place the long implants. And if you look into this article of the prevalence, it's 50-50. The type 1 is usually 54 or 52%, and the, all the other types are also other 50s. So we can see that after extraction of the posterior molars, the 50% chance, 50 chance that you will have to do additional sinus lift surgery. Also, you have to consider that what happens after extraction. The sinus floor does not stay there. After extraction, especially this classification for superiorly curved sinus floor goes rapid resorption after extraction. So if you look into the picture, the roots are protruding inside the sinus cavity and you can see that there is a lot of bone but these bones are totally dependent on the tooth and if you extract this molar, this amount of bone will go rapidly resorbed. And also the data shows that the superiorly curved sinus floor goes rapid ex uh, resorption and the sinus floor goes uh, rapid expansion. So, seven years ago, Dr. Uh, Professor Rasperini from Milan University has come up with the idea that maybe if we can uh, do the rich preservation after extraction of the maxillary molars, and maybe they can prevent the sinus lift surgery. So, he divided his patient into two groups. Group one was extraction and do nothing, wait six months, and sinus graft and implant. But in group two, after extraction, he performed rich preservation. And after six months, there was lower chance that you will have to do the sinus graft to place the implants. So based on his concept, I coined this term, the sharp, sinus happy alveolar rich preservation. So in short, it's sharp. Based on this uh, concept, I'm performing a study, clinical study, 
using this uh, genogenic bone graft and the uh, collagen membrane coverage in concept of open healing ARP. And after four months of the rich preservation and replace the implants and wait additional two or three months and deliver the crowns. So today I will show you three cases. The three cases. Number one, case one, uh, she was very afraid of this surgery. And after uh, extraction, so we performed this sharp technique. And as you can see, there is the intraosseous artery and the mucous membrane is thickened and the cortical bone is very thin. If you did not do sharp, there will be a great chance that you will have to vertical augmentation or horizontal augmentation or sinus lift surgery to place the implants. But using this sharp technique, average 10 minutes, I'm done, just wait four months and I can just go for the implants. This is what happens after four months. A little bit shrinkage, but the bone consolidation is visible. And this is before extraction and after implant placement. And this is the summary of the case. Before extraction, after extraction, sharp, the suture, and four months later, implant placement and crown delivery. Very simple and very effective measure. And also, this sharp technique preserves the vertical dimension, but also in basic concept, it preserves the very nice horizontal dimension. And look at the thick buckle bone. So this is a very good advantage of this sharp technique. Okay, this is number two. Um, this case was more advanced and it's a blown out defect and severe defect was observed. So after extraction, a thorough debridement of the granules and tissue was performed and we grafted the xenogenic bone mixed with collagen and also we covered with the non-cross-linked collagen membrane in two layers. After that, we performed this hidden egg suture. This specific hidden egg suture has been uh, published in our previous study with the advantage of the nice suturing technique to preserve this uh, keratinized tissue. So we compare with this uh, hidden egg suture with the conventional egg suture or cross symmetry suture and we demonstrated this hidden egg suture can better preserve the keratinized tissue and also it helped to better heal the uh, bone regeneration. Uh, due to the limitation of the time, I'm not going to show you the, how to perform this hidden egg suture. So go to the YouTube and type into my channel, JC Parkland, or you can just type hidden egg suture. Then you will see the video how to perform this uh, technique. Or you can download the application from the smartphone, the uh, iTunes or Google Play Store, type the back to the suture and you can download this application. So this is what happens after suture removal and after two months, nice healing. But you can see that there are a moderate shrinkage on the buccal side. But after four months, it stays there. And if you raise the flap, comparison to the uh, previous uh, situation, you can see a very nice healing. And we know that it is very difficult to regenerate this bone in a vertical height and horizontal dimension. It takes time and it's very technique sensitive. But after extraction, you just graft the bone, cover, perform the suture, and wait for a month, and this is the bone you can have. So it's a very, very simple technique. So this is before the extraction, after sharp, and this is immediately after sharp, come beam see the image. And you can see that the bone is grafted over uh, on the buccal side. And after four months, the over augmented buccal bone has been uh, shrink maybe or disappeared. But we know that the uh, always bone goes the certain amount of the resorption. So always recommended to uh, augment 130% or 150%. But the thing I want to uh, notice is that you can actually preserve in a vertical dimension very nicely. And in this case, I think that this can be considered as the rich 
augmentation, not rich preservation. This is the after implant placement, and this is after final crown delivery. Nice bone healing and uh, the maintenance of the marginal uh, bone level is quite acceptable. The summary of the case after extraction, the sharp and the implant placement and the crown delivery. This is the final case and I think that this is the typical indication of the sharp technique. Uh, tooth number 26 was diagnosed hopeless and we know that after extraction of the 26, we have to perform the vertical augmentation or sinus lift floor surgery. But if we look into the uh, sinus floor, there is a, some kind of a mysterious bone on the floor of the sinus. From the uh, paraxial view of the CBCD, you can see the bone is actually on the bottom of the sinus floor. And if you create a window, it will be very difficult to raise the flap, I mean the Schneider membrane. So if the sinus lift is not possible, then you have to perform the sharp technique. This is immediately after sharp, and this is a summary. After extraction, sharp, and in this specific case, there was a lot of bone and also a lot of keratinized tissue, so I performed a flapless implant surgery. Every procedure was so simple, and the patient did not complain of any discomfort or pain. So good for me and good for the patient. And this is the final delivery of the crowns. And also after crown delivery, we took additional CBCD for other reasons. And you can see that the implant is nicely seated in the bone housing. So at this point, you might think that SHARP is a nice procedure and a nice technique, but we know that the posterior molar region has the weakest bone density. And if you graph the bone particles, then maybe will it help or maybe it will do bad to the mechanical strength? Is there any other way to increase the mechanical strength? So we looked for the method to increase the mechanical strength during the sharp. Luckily, we found an article in 2015. The colleagues from the uh, New York Stony Brook University investigated the compression force on the graft materials. Interestingly, in their studies, the more compressive force they applied, they observed the more bone regeneration in histological and radiographical analysis. In their follow-up study in 2016, they moved on to the canine extraction model and they even applied greater compression force. This time, they even applied 200 grams. And also, very interestingly, the greater the compressive forces, the greater new bone regeneration was observed. In their discussion, they uh, suggested some mechanism why this works, but we know that we don't know the full mechanism underlying of this uh, phenomenon. So, based on these studies, we also performed this uh, open healing rich preservation technique, and we have uh, performed the same procedure after extraction, bone graft, membrane coverage, heat and egg suture, after four month implant placement. From the radiographical analysis, we could not find any statistically significant difference between 30 newton and 5 newton groups. But in histological analysis, this is the 5 newton group, and you see that the bone is minimally formed, but at the same period, in a greater compression force, you can see that the more bone is created from bottom to top. So at this moment, we do not know how this works and what is the optimal um, compression force and what is the best way to apply the force. So there are many, many homeworks for us to continue, but at this moment, maybe if we can manipulate this compression force, there is a chance that we can enhance the mechanical strength to place the implants. So, I think that the sharp technique is a good um, alternative to conventional sinus lift surgery because it's so simple and it's very uh, 
convenient and it's far from being painful. So when you perform this sharp technique, maybe you can manipulate this force, compress the force, and if we can find the final and the best recipe, then there will be a less chance to perform the sinus lift. I'm not saying that this sharp technique can com completely uh, perform instead of this uh, sinus lift surgery. But if you have this sharp tool in your toolbox, maybe there will be chances that you can use this tool in a very handy way. All these uh, studies and um, analysis have been impossible without this team from Tangu Perio. And I want to thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.